Hey, good morning, everyone. Today, uh, it's going to be a longer video. I'm going to have a couple of episodes on this. This is a daily workout and what I do while doing the swale, the chicken coop, and everything. So you'll see in detail what I do. Uh, digging and uh, packing and all everything that comes with it and the animals uh, what I do want to start off by telling you is uh, safety first and the reason why I say this is because I know better uh, but that one time that you forget about safety things happen uh, a little while ago a while back I should say about a week ago I was stacking up some, uh, one of those blue big pallets on the top and uh, of a, a stack of them I had. It might have been about five feet tall. And I wear gloves, I wear steel toe boots, uh, my glasses, these are safety glasses, and uh, constantly working and everything. Well, the unexpected happened. Uh, my dog was being chased by the rooster, and she climbed up to the top of this five-foot uh, stack of pallets. One of them was teeter-tottering. And she walked further out, and I was working with sneakers. Big mistake. Safety shoes, steel toe, when you're doing hard work, labor like this. Uh, and it came down hard, sharp, hit my left toe, my big toe, and the toe next to it. Um, I saw stars. Uh, I was in tears. Uh, it's not severed, but it cut the bottom part of the nail, this part right here, and across, and the nail flipped up this way, and I don't think I broke my toe, but I taped it up anyway, being a nurse, you know, I should know this stuff, so I taped it up, because if I go to the hospital, they're not going to do anything except tape it up and tell me he'll take pain medicine. So I took my Tylenol and went about doing my business. It's been about a week. It's still very, very tender. I have my steel toe boots on and uh, you'll see uh, what I've done. But I am fine. Uh, you stay well. You try when you do something, check, have a checklist, you know, safety first, safety comes first. Uh, when you least expect it, things can happen, uh, even when you prepare the best that you can. Well, with that, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out my pages, my t-shirt, bonfire t-shirt shop, my Amazon wish list. I do things here with what I have. Uh, I don't have a lot of tools, and you'll see. This is hard work, and I'll try to explain to you. Hopefully, you'll be able to hear me. The wind is picking up. It's uh, Sunday morning, and um, the temperatures last night went down to like 69, and it's going to go to high 94, 95. Uh, the rest of the week, uh, in the middle of the week, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, depending on what our uh, higher power gives us, uh, it should rain. We haven't gotten much rain here. We got we got a lot of drizzle, enough just to top off the dust on this land. But uh, I'm waiting. I'm trying to do as much as I can uh, before everything hits. I'll show you around and uh, Check it out. It's going to be a long one. I figure uh, hopefully less than an hour. So save it. Watch it at night when you're in bed. And uh, tell me what you think. Uh, comment below. And uh, 
you know, any ideas would help. But, uh, you know, you do what you got to do. Well, here we go. I'm going to go down now to show you what I do to cut the swale. And by cutting the swale is digging flat and bringing it out further. So hopefully you could see my progress and you can see what I do. I'll be right there. Now I usually use three buckets. <coughs> These are cheap buckets. The handles fall off, but I still use them and I carry them. These are a lot sturdier. You can hold it up with the handles and that works great. So I use that one. What I do first is break up the dirt. I try to take up enough for about six six buckets load, but I do three at a time, lay them down. This is hard work. I just uh, celebrated my 67, uh, 66, 67, something like that, birthday in September. And I'm still going strong. I still go forward. Keep moving forward, I want something done. I don't have the money, I don't have the tools, figure out a way and get things done. That's what the desert life is about. When you do something in the desert, you have to do something that's gonna work two or three times or for the purpose of two or three different things. And I'll show you my ideas, this is why my ideas change. My body can't take it. I've got uh, certain illnesses that prevent me from working hard and I have to keep taking breaks. Uh, but I need a homestead. I want to make this work. I want to give this uh, piece of land hopefully completed. So passing on to the kids, family, they can use it after I die, whatever they, but uh, hopefully my niece, my daughter, my son will uh, be able to carry the tradition once I get the basis of everything started. That's why I work so hard. So, it usually takes me seven shovels to fill up a bucket. This dirt is compromised of sand, small walk of rocks, caliche, and bentonite. All that mixed together does a concrete type mix. I put a little Portland cement in the bottom of the buckets sometimes, but not a lot. I don't want to get it too hard. When it rains, the dirt alone, uh, when it rains a lot, the dirt, uh, the rain seeps through and raises this land up that all the rocks start coming up and hardens this soil. Uh, if you can see this, it, it's hard. Uh, when I go down like five, six feet, it's like hard concrete. So this is why it's good for an adobe house. You may
mix it up with your straw. I put a little Portland cement. You do what you can. Uh, check out other videos. Tiny Shiny Home. Let me tell you, shout out to all of them for what they do. Um, I wish I could do videos like they do. But there's only one person, an old guy, me, doing this. Uh, off, uh, off grid frugal and let me tell you I'll put the links down uh, so you can check out their uh, pages and uh, I got a few other ones I can't remember right now this is what happened but uh, let me stop talking and do some of this work I jump from one job to another because I get bored just doing the same thing. So I go from doing land work, doing the swale, to the chicken house, chicken house, to the container, to the uh, garden, anything that I have to use and dig, I take my time uh, doing it. I just keep moving. I want to give a shout out to one of my viewers, uh, she sent me uh, uh, two gifts from my wish list. And uh, thank you, Elizabeth A., uh, for the kind gesture and uh, for uh, purchasing the t shirts. I appreciate all the help. I'm able to get some parts so I could complete this. I have a friend of mine that I met here a while back and he has a backhoe. He saw what I was doing here and he says this is ridiculous. I'm going to turn the camera right now. This is ridiculous. I'm going to bring my backhoe and help you out. So I really, really appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to show you. I take these buckets now, stack them up here, and then walk around, grab a bucket, and pour it where I have to. I deal with the animals at the same time. The chickens tear things up, the dogs tear things up, and I got to fix it again. So uh, this is the reason why I need to uh, contain them for a while until I get all this done. Uh, here we go. And these are heavy. Keeps me fit. Told an older guy. This is so repetitious that you have to take a break. I'm going to take you guys along with me. So you can see my next step. And uh, I'll come right along. Let me set up the camera for you. Those buckets I usually walk here. On this side it makes it easier for me. And uh, you can see the mess I have back there. Uh, the roosters up there. And just and by Luna, of course, she's tearing everything up. She's too cute. Well, here I go. He's just getting ready to move because she knows I'm going to tell her to get out of the way. I'll be right back. What I'm doing right now is putting a barrier on the back of the chicken coop, pouring it down, tamping it to create, a, how do you call it, a, a barrier for wind 
and insulation from the outside and to keep the mice and uh, other critters out. So I usually do this. Now you know why you need steel toe boots. I pour this. I'll be right back and get another bucket. I'm coming. I pour up both of them at the same time. Now I'll lift this up high enough up to here. Pack it down. When it rains, it'll pack it even more. It'll be solid as a rock. I have not started on the second floor because I want to do this uh, first. I've also started doing the water catchment. That's where the water catchment is going to go. The roof is going to come straight out up to about this height. And then uh, gutter system is going to go bring the water down. I'll have a, a spigot down on the bottom. And the overflow is going to go to the 300 gallon tub that I have sitting back here. So I'll always have water for these chickens and uh, little stuff. Uh, you know, you, you, you shower with uh, non-potable water and potable waters you drink. And where I live, we have potable that you pay for, which is 25 cents a gallon. And you learn how to, how do you call it? Uh, minimize your usage on this water. Water is expensive out of here. Uh. Luna, move. Thank you. That's these three. Now I'll bring, I'll throw these back and I start the process all over again. I do this constantly. Then I take my rake, rake it out visually to flatten it out. The barrel is uh, buried a little bit. I'm not gonna bury the whole thing. I just want to bury it to the point that it doesn't freeze the lines when I start uh, putting it. So, sorry for my back. Everything here has its purpose. It's working so far for me. If not, I have to change plans and uh, readjust. And that's the name of the game around here. Readjusting, uh, complaining, other things. Health comes in the way. Your vehicle, you gotta have about two, preferably three vehicles. If one breaks down, you have another one. If not, you're locked down in your land until your vehicle gets, uh, until your vehicle gets fixed. And by getting it fixed, uh, it could take a week, it could take a month. So you're here and have work to do on, on your land. Uh, this dog is amazing. She has to be right next to me. Isa is the other one. She's uh, chasing a uh, lizard. Uh, but two or three uh, things that you need all the time. Different plans. Be used to changing your plans because it might not work. Uh, big city gives us convenience. And you know, you could call Walmart, you could call somebody, you have the money, and all you do is work to, uh, 
uh, have somebody else do the job, but you never get to enjoy what you have here. So my choice was, let me do what I have to do to get my life uh, somewhat enjoyable at my age. I should have done this at the age of 30, but uh, things don't go the way things uh, are planned. So you can see uh, Isa, I mean Luna, oh, just like his, that cold one and the other one comes. And she has to stay right here. She moves from my side and then she goes all the way over there and she's digging up what I just put in. Luna, no. She, uh, it is what it is, you know, uh, it's amazing. So I do things two, three times. That's why it takes me as long. And then I tamp it down. I tamp this down so that the winds, the high winds, doesn't blow most of these out. This is constant work every day. Not counting feeding the animals, uh, cooking for yourself, cleaning all the dirt that flies into that container. Uh, trying to save money, trying to buy tools. I gotta get a ladder. The only way I could get Wi-Fi is if I climb up on top of my container and hold it up as high as I can so I could get a signal from a tower. And that's hard, just standing up like this and just going around to see where the signal is because signals come from back there, back there, or it comes from this side. And they're miles away. So you have to play around different time. The weather uh, does it uh, different, gives you better signal when it's uh, cloudy because I guess the signal waves stay on the bottom and the clouds cover it. Otherwise, it just spans around and you can get a proper signal. But I'll continue doing this. But I'm going to show you again. I'm going to get more dirt because everything that I'm doing today has to do with the land, with the dirt. I've raised the land up or the dirt floor from the chicken house. I put metal underneath and covered it with dirt so nothing crawls underneath and climbs up and goes in there. All these panelings right here are going to be removed and you'll see a solid wall. I'm just trying to design some something that's easy for me to get the eggs, check out the chickens if I need to eat some chickens. That's the other thing. Uh, think about where you're getting your food. This is a hard way of living. It's not for everyone, uh, but I like the outdoors. I like working and uh, clearing the land. I see progress and it's so gratifying to see this. You have to depend on yourself. Here comes the wind. It comes from this side, blows down that mountain, the long mountain, that's a nine point. And if, I'm telling you, this wind is brutal sometimes. So, you depend on yourself. You depend on food. Uh, you could go shopping. If you have the money, more power to you. But I'm broke. Uh, I try to do what I have. There's hardly any work out here. I can't uh, 
uh, work for a long time. I'm on disability. I can't take it. Sometimes I'm, not, I'm out of commission for about a week or two, maybe three weeks, just for the little bit that I do, like you see today. And uh, uh, employers don't want that, you know. And then with the doctor's appointments and stuff like that, it makes it hard. But I keep moving forward. <laughs> Tamping all this down. I keep moving you guys along so you can see. That's the hole she dug right there. And uh, I tamp it down, try to make it as flat as possible. This dirt wall is going to go up halfway to push this back. It's not going anywhere with the wind because it's anchored down on the bottom. It has dirt, it has uh, T-post all the way down, holding everything together. Uh, uh, cement, this cement, cemented, the poles are cemented. Uh, that's why I need like tons of cement. When you do something like this, it's got to be at least a minimum of 24 inches to bury your post and the way I do it is I put uh, dig the hole 24 inches because the land can be loose and the wind can blow things apart the high winds so what I I do is I take the post I bury the post and put a little bit of concrete in I put a concrete on the bottom and then I put dirt and then I put more concrete and dirt. So I have like layers, I have two, three layers. I mean, three to four layers of concrete in there. And then I top it off with concrete solid piece around the whole piece. That way the dirt, the concrete binds together and that's not going any place. Uh, I still have to anchor down the container. Gotta get straps to put it in and to make sure that the winds from the north, the northeast, or this uh, northwest doesn't topple that over because that's a 40 foot high top container. So it could easily tip over. And that's why I'm in a mad rush. I gotta get insulation. Uh, so I could insulate that, the cold weather's coming, uh, and then it gets hot, and then it gets cold. And you know, the next episodes, I will not be talking about weather because weather changes drastically here all the time. And it is what it is and I can't change it. So I, I just let you guys know what I go through so if you ever have an idea that, hey, you know something, I can do this, you can. You just have to plan. And if you don't plan, uh, you have to adjust. So. Now Luna moved away from here, digging the hole where I just tamped. She's now digging another hole. I love these dogs. These are my babies. They protect me. They protect the chickens. They watch out for any predators. Luna is young. She's only six months old. Isa is older. She spots them first. Uh, Luna, I mean, Isa is about a year and a half. And she spots them and she wants to go right after them. But I have to keep her safe. And here, uh, you gotta protect yourself and your land. Because you're out here by yourself. You don't know what can happen. So, we have uh, bears, coyotes, javelinas, fox, badgers, uh, rattlesnakes, 
So you always have to be aware of everything, uh, everything you do and where you walk. We have, uh, I said, bears, elk, uh, cougar, bobcats, uh, wild cattle, uh, donkeys, horses, traveling all around this place. So you have to be careful that the dogs don't go off the property and chase them. And we have predatory birds. We have owls, hawks. Uh, you're not allowed to kill them. I wouldn't want to kill them anyway, because either you have rats or you have rattlesnakes. I'd rather have the rattlesnakes because they warn me. The rats and the mice, they'll run around here uh, like crazy in the evening. And I want to make a pen for the dogs. Now, this is what I was talking about, the two-purpose thing. I need containment for my chickens now. That's one. This part right here. I'm doing it in a, in a way that if I ch change it to a dog pen, the dog pen is already done. And I can have the dogs here closer to my house. And the... I'll build another chicken structure right over here. So it's further away and all these feathers and all this uh, manure that the, the chickens do and the mess and the crowing will uh, somewhat lower it down a little bit. But Well, you get the picture. I tamp this down. Now, I go back and do the, there goes Luna, and there goes Isa. Isa, you my baby girl, right? I love you. And now I'll just do more dirt uh, shoveling. I'll put it down here. Sorry to make these videos like this. I just don't have the Wi-Fi and the uh, apps to get it downloaded. Now this uh, Wi-Fi, it takes me for 15 minutes about three hours to upload for a 15 minute video. So you can imagine it's gonna take me a long time. I gotta get up early in the morning, do it, leave the phone uh, with someone, so to download so you can see this. Well, here I go. And this is the process. This is going to be episode one of everything that I do, and I'll show you everything that I am doing today. And then the next video some of the progress with this and you will also see my next project that's coming up so I can finish all this up. as I was saying about the van uh, it was broke down for a while uh, finally figured out the mechanic finally figured out what was wrong we changed all the sensors van kept stopping and wouldn't run, wouldn't start, changed the fuel pump, changed the fuel filter three times, changed all the sensors, uh, checked the wiring for any mice that might have uh, gotten to the wires, uh, but we did find that 
since this is a 1994 E150 Econoline van, doesn't have all the bells and whistles that you normally have with the sensors in a newer car. I prefer a new car. I mean, I prefer a, an older car because that's the way I am. I, it's easier to take care of. I don't have a payment. Uh, cars now are like of 60,000, 100,000 for a car. And out here, it is ridiculous, the prices. So let me bring this up and then I'll take you to where I'm going next. Uh, it's ridiculous. Constant moving. Can't say I'm not getting a workout. I'm trying to stay as healthy as possible. I'm gonna take you to see from a different angle the progress of this swale. From here on this side. You can see how it comes out. And that's how much I've done to widen it out. Now remember in my other videos, this whole swale is going out to there all the way to that bush. Not this brown one, but that green one. And it's going all the way across. So if I get this done, I'm gonna do a small little divertment growing up. So at least some of the water goes and I'll put a pond in the, on that side to collect the water that overflows from this, from this whole area. And then this is, this part here, is going to turn and continue straight up and all the way at the end of my property which is pretty far uh i have ten and a half acres i'll put another pond so the water will be dispersed all the water is coming this way and i want to keep my adobe house because that's my final home that's going to be what i want to live in is the adobe house the containers for storage lock it up and I, I feel safer in there. I have the dogs. I could protect myself from the elements, uh, though it's sometimes hard. Well, now you know, those are the buckets. I filled them up. I'm gonna bring these buckets and keep filling up this whole area. You can see how flat it's getting right here. And then, I raised this area up and I have wire fencing underneath and on the inside here there's wire fencing underneath and I raised the ground up now the good thing about these chickens they are pretty much clean uh, they have their own space now the ducks on the other hand they are messy birds and uh, this one here, let me see, no eggs on this side. But I think on this one, this one here, I'm just moving the piece of wood. And then she's got those laid there. There were four eggs this morning, and that's what I have now. I have something like uh, 30 something eggs. So I eat eggs every day. I can eat omelet. I have protein, my carbs. I get canned goods, uh, vegetables, because nothing out here lasts long in this heat and sun and rain and cold. Even though your refrigerator, my refrigerator is running, it's not, uh, it gets too hot in there 
to keep it cool. So here are my chickens. These are the pallets I was talking to you about. That pallet right there was about up to here. And when it fell down, I saw stars. Uh, toes still hurt. These one by ones that I was able to obtain right here. I'm going to make the um, their nesting boxes for the chickens. Now, let me see what else. All that dirt is coming here because I'm raising up this land so that when the water comes, it's going to be dispersed out that way. Because my adobe house finally will be finished there. Right in the circle. So I have to protect the perimeter of rushing water coming in. Uh, I'm going to have uh, drainage underneath the house. I'm going to have... Uh, solid brick wall or tire wall that's where i have my tires uh so if the water does come through it'll disperse it around the house and the house itself doesn't get wet a uh, dome adobe house is one of the strongest they've lasted thousands of years uh out here uh, if you come down to big ben, big ben country and see all these mountains come visit uh, and you'll see some of the old houses that were made just by clay bricks not bags but clay bricks they have the clay they have the sand this stuff here you have to pick it out real well they have like limestone for the wall and you could go out there and take a look at it uh, this is uh, part of my garden uh, this, how do you call it? This, uh, October 5th, Thursday th through Sunday, we're having, uh, it's called Jackass Flats 5th Annual uh, Dutch Oven Cook-Off. There's going to be goat roping for the kids, horseback riding, there's uh, everything going on, uh, wagons musical entertainment uh many bands coming in vendors my artwork will be there uh a lot of my friends will be there uh take a trip out here it's a it's a long ride if you're coming like you know if you're driving but it's well worth it the mountains the view uh big bend national park it is fantastic and you have the big bend uh state park which is right across the road but uh if you want to see animals you want to see the hot springs you want to see boquilla which is uh mexico you could just walk across you have to have your passport so you could get uh into mexico uh i mean there's things a lot of things to do there's a lot of places to eat drink and be merry so uh stop on by uh come and see us at the Little Borough Country Store on State Road 118, and it's going to be held at the arena behind the store, uh, and you'll see it. It's going to be running all day uh, from Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, I think it's the 5th through the 8th, or the 8th, is it? Yeah, 5th through the 8th. And uh, Monday, back to work, back to normal. But these tires i collect them i'm getting more and that's going to be uh wall retainment anything i can use those tires for you pack them up with the dirt you can make a house out of that so uh that's down in the future these are some of my sheets that i have for the roofing for that uh part that i'm doing there and then i still have to put my fence barrier uh, all around my property and that's uh, the compost pile uh, right there that I made which is a lot easier until I get uh, septic and the water uh, flushing I've got to see how everything works but 
this is, for me, this is life. This is all life. This mess right here is my mess. I'm happy because I've seen progress. I've seen when my land has been all trees, mesquite trees, bushes, mesquite bushes, and uh, it was all like this. Everything is like that. And I cleared this by hand. So next thing I have to do is get a ladder so I could start putting welding on top of my container to shade for next summer. So you have to think ahead of time. Those tires you see right there are going to be pots. I'm going to put plants in them. Uh, and this is going to be my water containment. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a couple of barrels in there so when the water comes uh, flowing in, there'll be a pipe coming in. And I'll have uh, maybe about six barrels of water, 55-gallon barrels. So if I ever need emergency water, I could always have water. Uh, price is water ridiculous. I'm clearing all this out to make room. And on this side, here I'm going to put a shed so I can move the stuff out of my container or whatever little tools I have. I could put it in there and I could work. That'll be like my workshop area. And then I'll spread out little by little as years come by. Uh, but again, thank you for watching. And I'll show you my progress on my next video. You guys stay safe. Don't forget, one day at a time. Robbie, love you, boy. Take it easy.